My precious. I want it. I need it. Stop! You don't need a gimbal to create smooth shots. In this video, I'll show you five creative ways to create smooth cinematic shots without a gimbal. Smooth shots are an easy way to establish that something has been professionally shot versus something that is kind of amateur. Now, this obviously is not cut and dry. There are plenty of films across Hollywood and YouTube and everything that use handheld as their shooting style, among other things like POV shots and mounting your camera to various things. So, you know, take that with a pinch of salt, but typically smoother shots are seen as cinematic and professional. And with that said, my first method is to use a slider. Probably a pretty predictable answer, but a slider is one of the most tried and tested methods for getting a smooth shot. Now there are two types of sliders, motorized automatic sliders or non-electric manual sliders. Which one you get totally depends on you and your budget and there are pros and cons to each. A manual or non-electronic slider has the benefit of letting you move the camera as fast as you want because you're pushing it with your hand. But you can also find these at a much more affordable price because they're just some plastic, some rubber, and a bit of metal. Now, automatic sliders are a whole other ballgame because you can build on them with accessories, but let's cover the basics first. An automatic slider is battery powered, so it lets you do something as simple as press a button to move your camera backwards or forwards. Where it gets really interesting is with most automatic sliders, you can program in how far you want the camera to go forwards or backwards, and you can even have the slider repeat the movement over and over so that you can get some really creative masking shots. Now, the thing with sliders, you can only move them in one direction backwards or forwards along the same axis. But this is where I said earlier that we can build on this base with accessories. You can get some very interesting pan and tilting heads from companies like Edelkrone, which allow you to basically create this movement where your camera looks like it's floating through space, even though it's only going along one axis. And it still is, but adding that pan and or tilt axis really does help create a more interesting shot. I don't personally have a pan or tilt head, so I'm just going to use examples from Edelkrone on the screen here. And no, they are not sponsoring this video. They're just the first example I could think of because they've got some pretty cool stuff. Method number two, use a magic arm. I briefly went over this in the first point, but using a magic arm, you can attach your camera to almost anything. So a super easy way to make our camera's movement smoother is to attach it to something that is already smooth. One of my favorite examples, which I showed off in an earlier video, which you guys can check out at the end of this video, is a suitcase. Although you can attach it to things like a door, a cupboard, or a car. Now this has to be one of the easiest methods to get a smooth shot because what you're attaching the camera to is already smooth. So by proxy, you're going to be getting a smoother shot. The only limit, of course, is that whatever you attach it to, that is your range of motion. So opening a door whilst it's a smooth shot and a pretty interesting one at that, you, you don't have much room to move after that so you'd have to fill it in with another kind of shot or perhaps putting it on a suitcase well that's probably your best option because you can move that around a lot more you're just then dependent on the height of your suitcase unless you get a little creative and put some books on it perhaps but then you got to be really careful there's actually a little bit more we can do with magic arms that doesn't have to do with clamping the camera onto things but that's going to be covered in method three the heavy lifter. The quickest way to stabilize your handheld shot is to give your camera three points of contact. Typically, this will be both of your hands and then either your eye for the eyepiece or a camera strap. Now, if you're like me and you often just get rid of your camera straps straight away because you're never gonna use them, <laughs> Well, this can be a little bit tricky. So this is where the solution comes in of making your camera heavier. When you're using a really light mirrorless camera and your setup overall is just extremely light, that is what lets the micro jitters in our hands show through in the shot. The heavier the setup is, the more your hand jitter will be reduced. To do this, we can do something like putting our camera in a cage or putting a heavy lens on the camera or maybe something as simple as having a magic arm attached to the camera and the other end is holding on to something heavy. I realize that some camera cages can get a little bit expensive, closer to $100, but you can get a lot of magic arms for like 30 bucks. And then all you need to do is literally have it clamp onto a rock or a heavy water bottle and you've got the heavier setup that you need to reduce those micro jitters. This is why Hollywood level films look so good even though they're shot handheld because they're using these big Ari Alexa or red camera setups that are really heavy. You can't see the micro jitters with a heavier setup so it just looks much better. My precious. <laughs> Yes, yes, no one can take you from me, no one! Method number four, and this is gonna piss some people off. 
buy a Lumix camera. <laughs> Now I know what you're thinking, you use Lumix, of course you're going to say this because you want to go on that Japan trip. Lumix, I do. But that's not why I'm saying this point and before you click off, hear me out. IBIS. For those of you who don't know, it stands for In-Body Image Stabilization. IBIS is a method by which your camera fights against your movements to help stabilize your shots. So it will physically shift the sensor in the opposing direction to which you're moving your camera. If you kind of jerk up a little bit, it will shift the sensor down a bit to counter your movement. And it's incredible to watch a side-by-side -side of IBIS being on versus being off because when it's off, you suddenly see all the micro jitters that it doesn't look like your hands are shaky, but when you're holding a camera and you're trying to get a shot, they actually are. Now the general consensus across the entire camera community, and honestly, if you look at it for yourself, I think it's true. Lumix has the best IBIS in the industry, and they've even gone ahead and made it even better recently with a new software update that gave us the option to push the electronic stabilization to high. This allows us to create extremely smooth gimbal-like shots even when we're running at full speed. The shots look incredibly smooth when you bear in mind you're running. Here you can see a side-by-side -side where I have everything turned off. Now here's with the IBIS turned on, and here is with the electronic stabilization turned on to high. Now obviously with each step you turn on, you do get a little bit of a crop, but for the smoothness you get, it's worth it. And it's something that you can plan around. Now, of course, IBIS is something that most camera manufacturers put into their cameras, if not all of them now, I think, apart from Blackmagic, but that's different. Canon's has been so-so. There's been like a wobble issue, but I've heard it's gotten better. Sony's is good but it's not as good as Lumix's, and I've been able to confirm that by checking a friend's camera, which you guys can see for yourself online. Honestly, who knows what wizardry Lumix are using to do this? Wizardry? Yes, Mortem. Now release the gimbal. No! You can't have the precious! Then you leave me no choice. Behold, the power of Lumix Ibis! <laughs> Method number five, get some wheels. Now I said earlier how using a suitcase was a great way to smoothen out your shots. And you can even use a desk chair with wheels if you have one, and that's kind of okay. But my favorite way is using a longboard, specifically the X-Way electric longboard. Now obviously you can use any kind of longboard or skateboard or whatever, but the reason I like to use an electric one is because I don't have to constantly kick to propel myself all the time, and I can maintain a constant speed, which is helpful for keeping up with my subjects. When you combine this method with the tucked in arms method, you can get some incredibly smooth shots. And the best part is that I have complete freedom of movement in regards to I can twist my body left and right, I can tilt the camera up and down with my arms and shoulders, and I can always turn around on the board if I need to shoot the other way around because that's one limiting factor, you're facing one way. The freedom I get compared to using a slider, for example, is much more convenient and useful than, well, not. Now, you can also, of course, do this with rollerblades. I don't have any, but I used to when I was younger rollerblade all the time, and I think it's the ultimate method for doing this kind of smooth shot. And it's why you see so many Hollywood films having camera operators who are rollerblading through the scene, because not only do they do the shot fast and it's interesting and impressive, but the handheld shots come out pretty smooth because they are literally just gliding on the floor. You then tie that in with the freedom of movement, like I said earlier, but with rollerblades, it's much easier to turn around than it is on a longboard. If you're not in a position to get a gimbal, then there are definitely loads of creative solutions to get some smooth cinematic shots for your videos. That said, I do highly rate gimbals. Thank you, Schmandelf. Gimbals are literally the tool for creating smooth shots. But I hope that this video showed you guys that it's not the only way to go because you can get creative and get some awesome shots. But if you are curious about learning which gimbal you should get and maybe you're looking for a tiny gimbal from 2024, check out this video over here to watch them battle it out and see which one comes out on top.